process, make no false promises, but it should be an organic process. So um, dialogue is free, begin with that first, um, and then we look for the resources, the, the money. Um, why this neighborhood? Because Watts is unique. The people in that neighborhood are very unique. Um, because of the monument, because of the infrastructure of the art center, but also because the Watts House project is a model, one which I imagine would be reproducible, um, and not necessarily by me. Um, so, to move ahead, the, we did our first event, our launch event, two weeks ago, um, and our first remodel. So, we built an exhibition that framed the work that we were doing there. Here's Felix again with one of his, uh, one of the drawings for, for the plan. Um, the work that we're doing here, so we had volunteers from all over Los Angeles, students, professional artists, architects, USC, Art Center, uh, Cal Arts, UCLA. Um, here's some of the family, that's uh, Felix's, uh, can you see this cursor? Okay, that's uh, Felix's wife and his daughter, and that's Hanardo's wife and his daughter, and that's Oscar Madrigal, and this is um, us playing around with imagining what um, Watts could look like. Uh, this is an uh, urban planning model produced by James Roja, um, and it was totally interactive. You can build it over time. And the cool thing is I actually had him build a mountain into Watts, so I told him in a couple years we'll work on, we'll work on that, <laughs> building that, um, redoing the porch. Um, in this instance with the remodel, it was a collaboration between two furniture designers and an architect. So it's Ed Stevens, and this one is Tanya, Tanya Guianega made these beautiful chandeliers for the porch. This is the one that we settled on, and here it is um, being built, and that's been built in um, Hinardo's uh, um, shop in his backyard, and that's also Hinardo installing it. Um, to give you an idea of the scale of time, we began building all of this in like a two and a half to three week period, so from fabrication all the way to, um, to installing it, so completed tile work. And here's the first light. And this is really a monumental moment for me. I, I just think the lamp looks so beautiful, but it's also just kind of like a recognition of, hey, I mean, we can actually do this, you know? Um, and not with a lot of money either. So um, to look ahead into the future, the second design phase um, is the expanding of the living room. So our architect, Francisco Arias, and these are two charrettes I'm gonna show you. Um, and Francisco has a great story. He grew up in Watts. He put himself through school by going and fighting in Iraq, um, came back um, using the GI Bill, put himself through the School of Architecture at USC, he graduated at the top of his class, totally invested in the project. Um, this one, this design is using of, um, of old railroad ties, like the Rodia's house used to be next to, to, the, to the train tracks. Um, this one um, is using translucent panels and photovoltaics. Both projects have solar power paneling on the top, and we're um, actively um, seeking uh, uh, donations in that at the moment. Um, we're trying to take the house, and all the houses totally off the grid, um, both opening the space and closing it. And then into the future as well, architects that we're in conversation with is Xu Shi uh, Xu, who's a uh, lives in uh, Los Angeles. That's a bamboo, actually, bridge, which is really beautiful. Um, this is another project that she did. I have no idea what we'll do with her, but just it just looks amazing, <laughs> right? Like, whatever it is, it's going to look cool. Um, and then our uh, architect, Mike Neiman, um, who also is a project manager, and some of you guys may recognize this building. This is a project that Shigeru Ban did that he was a project manager for, and this is one called Ashes and Snow. Um, so. That's it for me. I really look forward to talking with you guys more about uh, the Watts House project. Thank you.